Hi, I'm Jilly from Baby Sleep Made Simple. If you have a two, three, or four-year-old who is spending at least part of the night in your bed, this video is for you. I'm gonna show you how you can stop co-sleeping with your toddler and instead get them happily sleeping in their own bed in their own bedroom every night. If your baby is younger than two and cannot yet climb out of the crib, then check out this video right here where I walk you through, through transitioning from co-sleeping to the crib. And if you want to see my full guide on stopping co-sleeping and transitioning to a toddler bed, you can check that out on my website right here. There are seven steps to transitioning your toddler out of co-sleeping and into their own toddler bed. And the first step is you need to plan it. Ideally, you want to separate out any big transitions that your little one is going through. So if you plan to start a new daycare, if you have a new baby sibling on the way soon, or if mom or dad is changing their work routine or work schedules, then ideally you're not going to have your little one going through that transition as well as transitioning out of co-sleeping. So pick what you're going to focus on for this month and work on only that, only one transition at a time. Step two is communicate. And by that, I mean you need to hype this up big time several days, maybe even a week or two before you plan on transitioning out of co-sleeping. Make sure you start hyping up the fact that your little boy or little girl gets to sleep in their own bed, a big boy bed or a big girl bed every night and what, how proud you are of them. What a wonderful, amazing thing this is. What's even better is if they have an older cousin or a friend down the street who happens to sleep in their own big kid bed, point it out to your little one. Say, oh, you know, our cousin William sleeps in his big boy bed or little Josie down the street. She's got the cutest bunk beds and oh, she's such a big girl and you get to be a big girl just like Josie. It'd be really cool if Josie could call your little one and say, oh, wow, well, you know, this is such a great thing. Just hyping it up, making it really, really happy and wonderful and amazing thing that your little one gets to partake in, okay? So if you took high school drama class, this is where your skills are gonna really come in. Now, you don't wanna spring this on your toddler. So you don't wanna be like, tonight you're sleeping in your own bed in your own room, right? <laughs> Not that you would, but toddlers like to be kept in the loop. So depending on your little one's adaptability, you need to give them at least a few days to warm up to the idea, maybe even a week or two, so that by the time you're like, here we go, we're about to go on this amazing adventure, they've already gotten used to the idea and been able to wrap their head around it a little bit. So make sure to communicate your little one in advance. Step three is to set the scene. So this is where you get to transform your little one's bedroom into a fun and happy space that they actually wanna spend time in. So start spending daytime, sometime during the day, where, with your little one, reading books, doing puzzles, playing with Play-Doh, reading stories, cuddling, just having a really good time in their bedroom so they can start to associate it with like a fun and happy place, not this random place in their house that they never go to. You can start to decorate their bedroom. You can get some really affordable wall stickers, right, to make it a really, really cool like jungle or the outback. Um, if possible, have your little one pick out the new bed that they're going to sleep in, or at least pick out their sheets and their pillowcases, their favorite stuffed animals that they're going to sleep in. So really focus on making their bedroom a happy, fun, and warm and welcoming space that they're going to want to be okay spending some time alone in. Step four is to move your little one's bedtime routine into their own bedroom. Now the idea here is we're subtly introducing a new sleep space to your little one without getting huge protest. We're taking baby steps with this transition. So this applies if your little one is falling asleep in your bed and sleeping there all night long. If your toddler already falls asleep in their own bed in their own bedroom, this step doesn't really apply to you. But instead, if your little one's never even touched their toddler bed and spends all night long in your bed, this is a really important step. So for just two or three nights before you actually get them sleeping in their own bed, you want to do their bedtime routine in their new bedroom. So really just sitting in their bed together, reading a few books, singing a lullaby or two, telling a bedtime story, and then if they're used to falling asleep somewhere else like your bed, then let them go ahead and fall asleep there. But we're just slowly moving the whole bedtime routine and the whole bed schedule and ritual into their own bedroom and slowly removing your bedroom as the place where all the sleep happens. Step five is to camp out in your toddler's bedroom. Camping out for just a few nights is a great way to ease this transition or to warm your little one up to this transition without having, you know, big meltdowns. And it can also help us parents uh, feel reassured that our toddler is okay in their own bedroom 
all night long. So the concept is pretty simple. At bedtime, you're more than likely gonna need to hang out and just linger at your little one's bedside so they can fall asleep. If they wake up during the night, you may find that you just have to camp out on the floor for a night or two to get them to accept not being in your bed and not being in your bedroom. But there's a really important distinction to make here. You are not sleeping in your toddler's bed with them because then we've just gone from co-sleeping in one room to co-sleeping in a different room. So instead, you are camping out in your little one's bedroom, but they're sleeping in a new bed and they're sleeping in a new sleep space and they're sleeping on their own in the bed. You, lovely mama or papa, you get to camp out on the floor, or maybe even in a chair. Ideally, you just have to hang out until your little one falls asleep, but some parents may find just the first night or two that they actually have to sleep on the floor to keep their toddler in the bedroom. So we're just gonna do this for one or two nights to help your little one transition to their new sleep space before you start sleeping in your own bedroom again. But this can work really, really well with helping your little one actually stay in the bed all night long. So definitely give it a shot. Step six is to wean yourself out of the room. This step is really important because it helps you avoid getting stuck in your little one's bedroom for hours every night for you know months on end. What we're doing here is we are weaning you out of your little one's bedroom. So at this point, you're probably hanging out at bedtime for a little while to help your little one fall asleep. Maybe you're having to pop back in once or twice during the night to help your little one stay in their bed, or maybe you're actually camped out on their floor <laughs> sleeping there all night long. So we need to get you back in your bed sleeping there and your toddler happily accepting their room. So this is where we begin sleep training. Sleep training is the process of teaching your little one to happily and easily accept sleeping in their toddler bed, falling asleep there on their own and staying there all night long. There are several methods that you can choose to sleep train your toddler to get them to stay in their bed all night. And in my sleep training program, I help parents choose which approach might be best for their little one. Maybe your little one needs a quick method where you pop in and out of the room, or maybe they need you to do a gradual method and just stay a little bit longer. Um, and that's totally fine. All sleep training methods work as long as parents can stay consistent. If you'd like to see an example sleep training method to get a toddler staying in their toddler bed all night long, you can check out this video here. Step seven is to stay consistent. Like with all things parenting related, consistency is our best ally. So once you have made the decision to stop co-sleeping and to get your toddler sleeping in their own room all night long, you have to stick with it. If you give in occasionally, you know, if you have intermittent reinforcement where every now and then your little one gets to come into your bed, then that only confuses them and leads to them resisting every night and which is just, you know, a long drawn out battle that nobody needs. So once you decided to do this and begin sleep training, it's really, really crucial that you stay consistent. Your bed and your bedroom are now off the menu. Your little one is going to have off nights every now and then. They're going to get sick or they're gonna have a bad dream and they're gonna need you during the night. This is completely normal. But remember, rather than pulling them into your bed, just go camp out in their bedroom that night. So if your little one's sick, has a fever, isn't feeling well, um, is going through a rough patch or is having a bad dream, just pull out the old mattress and camp out on the floor with them to help them get through that rough night or two. And then all you have to do is wean yourself out of their room. This avoids pulling them into your bedroom, into your bed, a totally different sleep space, totally different sleep routine, and then having to get them used to a lot more, getting them back into their own bedroom. So it's normal to have rough patches in the future, but remember, I'm always gonna go to my little one's bedroom and my bedroom actually stays off the menu for the long term. Transitioning out of co-sleeping and getting your little one into a toddler bed can certainly feel daunting and overwhelming if right now your toddler refuses to sleep without you. I totally get it. But the seven steps in this video show you a clear way to get your little one happily and easily transitioning to their own bedroom. And remember, consistency is your best ally. So once you've made the decision, it's really important to stick with it. If you have any questions, you can post them in the comments down below, and you can also check out babysleepmadesimple.com for other sleep resources for your little one.